Hello friends, good morning and welcome to this broadcast. You know the other one was uh, interrupted but it's from my device. Alright, so you know device sometimes they need to be up, uh, uh, upgraded, right? Or the, um, the software, I think this uh, iPad, the, the, the storage is filled so maybe I will delete certain things. So it will stop interrupting me. But even if interrupt me a hundred times, I will still go on because I'm unstoppable. So greetings from me, from New Jersey, New, 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 his side, New Jersey, to wherever you are living or wherever you are. And I hope you are doing well. So I welcome you to join me. Let us share together. Since yesterday, I've been sharing on prayer and I titled it, Why Do You Pray? So today, because yesterday I have like two interruptions, so it has part one and part two is supposed to be one so since i didn't finish it yesterday i continued this so i say this is part three of it you can check my wall and uh, or groups or whatever you you see shared is it you can check up to uh, go uh, watch them steve you are welcome so so uh i want to share about that prayer you know why do you pray and yesterday i was saying like that uh people pray Especially Africans, because they are prey, they are um, they are vulnerable. They were suffering on that the the white men. They were really suffering, so they were they 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 were praying to unknown God. God, oh, come and save us, or whatever God they believe in. Before the white men came, so they pray because they were prey to others. Even till today, you see how people pray because they are prey to others, like the politicians and the religious leaders, or whoever the elders or people that are after their life or after their after their property. So they begin to pray. They want bad thing to happen or good thing to happen. So they pray because they are they are prey to others. Also, they pray because they are ignorant of solution to their problem. I said that yesterday. So they are, if, if they if they are not ignorant of solution to their problem, they won't pray. They will just go and do that. You know, which I, I used the water as example yesterday. If water is around and I'm thirsty, I don't need to pray to any God to give me water. I don't need to pray to any God to help me drink the water. I just reach out, boom, I drink the water. I solve that problem. So you pray because you are ignorant of solution to your problem. You pray also because you are pretending that all is well when it's not well. They use the Bible to teach you that, let the weak say, I am strong. So when you say, let us pray, who are you praying to? You haven't seen the God you're praying to. You are pretending that God is hearing you. Because in First John chapter 5, 14 and 15, it said, if we, this is the confidence we have in him, that whatever we pray according to his will, he heareth us. So, so if he hear, if he hears you without responding, it's either you are deaf or he's dumb. Because if he's not dumb, he's supposed to hear and respond. But they make you believe that you don't, you don't need to hear from God. Just believe he hears you. And you keep praying. That's why you're praying. Also, you are praying because you refuse to activate your brain. You refuse to think for yourself. You just believe what they ask you to believe. They tell you if you have faith like mount, uh, small faith as a mustard seed, you can move mountain, you can uproot trees, all those nonsense. Imagine that. And you, you think oh, it's a spiritual thing. Then what are you, why are you using it in the, in the physical world? We are not living in a spiritual world. We are living in the physical world that requires physical deeds, physical solutions, not spiritual deeds, not spiritual uh, solutions. So you're supposed to know that when you refuse to activate your brain, you'll be praying, I don't pray anymore because I activated my brain last year, 2018. I don't pray to any God. I don't pray to any invisible being. I don't. I don't. Whether you call them my ancestors or God. No, I pray to those who are around me, those I can reach, which I will also talk more about later. Also, you you pray because you believe without proofs. You just believe. You, you, didn't, you didn't prove what they said. You just believe. They tell you, God answers prayers. How's the how? Okay, let us pray. God give us money. He failed to give money. So why are you believing? If he can give you that money, you pray for. Then you don't need to believe, you know. He answers prayers. So but they make you believe that prayer works when it does not work. So you also pray because of the load of suffering. 
See what people are suffering like in Africa. Poverty. People are suffering in Africa. Even if you have money to buy some medicine, you know, sometimes it's hard to see the, the, the good medicine to buy. You have the money, but you are still suffering. Even where you paid, you paid money for something, yet you are not enjoying it. Some of you are online, you are praying so that it, maybe it will not run out. Because you don't. You're not in, you know, you, you don't, you, 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 you don't, you, you, you don't control it. Even if you pay, they can exploit you and nothing will happen. No government will not say, okay, they have to reimburse you or do no. It's gone, it's gone. You know? So you pray because of the load of suffering you are having. And when you need that, you see the tears coming down your cheek, you pray in. I don't know if you have, there's no person living in, in Africa that have not prayed with tears running down their cheek, especially Christians. If you're really serious, unless you are not a serious Christian, but every serious Christian have prayed at least once in his or her life, crying, read tears, gushing out. You know, the things that the Americans don't pray for, the Americans don't even think about that. You are praying for your children's school fees and you are crying. But in America, here until your, or your, or your child grow up to go to uh, university, that's college, you know, the school, take care, government take care of that. And in Africa, we're supposed to be better than America because we have a lot, but you see how suffering is making people praying. If not for suffering, many people won't be praying. That's why it seems like, oh, some people, when they go abroad, they stop praying or they stop going to church. No. It's because they find out, listen, this thing you are praying for in Africa, you don't supposed to be praying for it in the first place, if not for suffering. Suffering and smiling. All right? So, also you pray because of fear of unknown. Unknown, yo, you fear of God's wrath, fear of God's punishment, unknown, fear of something may before you, something may happen. You, call it, you, you bring your family together, you begin to pray. Any evil coming against us, who tell you if it's coming? Yeah. You begin to pray for unknown, unknown blessing, unknown cause. You begin to pray because of fear of unknown. Also, you pray because you worry about losing your life or your achieve or achievement whatever you have achieved in life you are afraid of losing your life you are afraid of losing whatever you have in life but how about your faith in 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 god of heaven you believe there is heaven there is a place jesus went to prepare for you his core mansion so why are you praying to, because of the face me i face you you build in your village or in the city why are you praying about the house you build somewhere in this world why there is a heaven where you have mansion why, why are you praying? Why are you praying for safety? Why are you praying for protection? Why are you praying for security? Let them come and kill you so you can go to heaven. You cannot go to heaven without dying, right? You have to die to go to heaven. So you, there's no way you, you can justify your silliness about praying uh, against losing your life and your properties when you said you have a heaven and there is a rich God there who is your father. He has prepared a place for you. So why are you leaving that place for cobwebs? Die and go to heaven. Think. So you pray because you worry about losing your life or achievement. You know, some parents also worried about losing their children. So they begin to pray. They begin to pray. Their children is sick. They begin to pray instead of taking them to hospital because they don't have money to pay for hospital. So they are worried about losing their children. They don't. No good parents want to lose their child. But your God will send his children to hellfire for disobeying him. What a wicked God is that you are serving. That, uh, trash that God. All right? You also pray because you believe you are weak in need of supernatural power or supernatural assistance. You believe that. But you are not weak. You are a perfect human being. You have all the strength, all the ability you need to make your life comfortable in this world. You have it to do anything. The power for invention or for anything in this life, for exploits, is in every one of us. The difference is that the people that dare to use their common sense to think until they come up with uh, how to do something or solution to their problem, that one we call heroes, that one we call inventors, that one we call great men and women. But all of us, we are equal as a human being. So you have, uh, yeah, that's why you, you think uh, you, you need a supernatural being to do something for you. Oh, you need God to do this. You need God to do that. God cannot do anything. God cannot provide for you. He cannot give you food to eat. What makes you think he can provide something else? They tell, you, they tell you you need that spiritual strength. There's a spiritual force controlling the natural world. It's a lie. Whatever is controlling the natural world is of the nature. 
It has nothing to do with any spiritual being or any higher being that exists in the sky. It has nothing to do with any invisible being. That's a lie we have been believing. That's why when you want to pray, you begin to look up. Instead of looking in yourself. I don't pray to any imaginary God. I pray to myself now. Sometimes I say to myself, let's do it. <laughs> I say, I pray to myself. I made a post earlier. I said, it, you know, look, look to your, uh, it, it, I think, yourself, not your spirit. That's what I said. I made that post. Yourself, not your spirit. So, because when you're talking about spirit, nobody ha can have uh, proven that. So, when you, whether it's your spirit or Holy Spirit, have you seen any of them? No, but you believe they exist. You say, no, man is a spirit, having soul and living in a body. That's crap. You cannot prove that. It's all, you know, guesswork or just believing. You believe nobody knows that. You don't know your, your spirit. You don't know the spirit of God. You don't know the spirit of anything the same, but you know yourself. And yourself is a unit. It's a whole. You can do all things. You can think all things. That's why you have dreams. No God is giving you any dream. If you will learn, you see the story, those of you that believe in the Bible, you see the story of Joseph and the Pharaoh in Egypt, right? You know, it's a story. That Pharaoh never existed, though. Mm -hmm. When he had dream, they said that, Joseph said to him that it's because of the multitude of the business of the day. That's what it is. If you, that's why when you go to bed, begin to think right thing about yourself. Be, do you want to know what is happening in your family, even if, though you are living in abroad, but your family in Africa? If you begin to think about them before you fall asleep, even during the day, you think about them, you will begin to see certain things. I'm telling you, that's how I know what is going on in my family, although I have not called them or been there. But I'm in America, but I know what is going on there because they are part of me. That is why you're supposed to consider your ancestors. You are one with your ancestors. You can never be one with Jesus. You can never be one with invisible God. You are one with your family. Whatever my siblings are, my parents, no matter, even if we, we don't talk for a certain time, I will still be part of them. I still know what is going on. So, that's, uh, it's not maybe guesswork. No, myself also travels. When I lay down myself, travel i have that power so you can call it whatever bit that's what i'm telling you that will stop ascribing your strength stop ascribing your wisdom stop ascribing your power to imaginary beings because you cannot explain it does not mean there's a god doing it if you cannot explain it there's another human being that can explain it we all have abilities to solve, solve our problems in this world how i wish you get this it's so simple Prayer is easier than work. That's why many pray. It's easier to pray. Oh God, give me this. Instead of you going to work, you rather pray for it. But if you, after prayer, you will still go to work. Why are you wasting your time praying? Go to work. Wake up in the morning, go to work. You don't need to pray. They say every when you wake up in the morning, the first thing, pray. Pray for what? Pray to who? All the time you have been laying in your bed sleeping, you didn't know you're supposed to be communicating with yourself, planning what to do when you wake up. So when you wake up, you'll not be confused. But when you wake up to pray, you're confused. Sometimes the dream you have, the vision or revelation you have within yourself that's supposed to be for yourself, you are confused about that. Why? Because you are praying to imaginary being to come and help you to understand your dream, to come and interpret it for you, to tell you what to do. Some people say that God tell them the type of cloth they wear. The Holy Spirit tell me the type of cloth that we wear. Look at my nonsense. If I want to dress up, I look at my clothes, I look at my shoes. Which today now we, we wear too much color, right? If I wear green sneakers, then I have to wear maybe another color button or the same green, then another color anywhere. Else. But at least my one of my shirt or one of my clothing my most much most, most, most my sneakers i don't care about those things or, or though but i do that so when i get to work they say man oh i like your combination i like the way you dress i like the way you smell you know i spend what I, I spend a lot of money on perfume or or well, america call it uh, <laughs> cologne so i spend a lot of money on that expensive one at that okay so because that's i, I that's how i want to look not that anybody is forcing me to do that. Sometimes I just dress anyhow. I don't care. 
You know, I don't care maybe shaving my head and all that. When I want to do it, I want to do it as I want. That's why I keep telling people I do my thing. But some people get upset when I say that. But that's how to live a, a better life for yourself. Live and do your thing. So you pray because you think it is easier to pray than to walk. Also, you know, you pray because you think you need extra strength and wisdom. So where do you, where will you get extra strength and wisdom? Already they use the religious book to tell you, God is the one that gives you strength. He gives you wisdom. Which God? If God gives strength and wisdom, there will be no single weak believer in God. There will be no single foolish person, foolish believer in God. But you see many people that believe in God, they still go to school under somebody that don't, that don't even believe in God. They still use something that the wisdom of unbelievers produce. Those people they call unbelievers. Like the, uh, the, what we're using, right? <laughs> Google and all that. You know, so, so some of the things you're using made in China. Chinese people, the people that made them, they're atheists. They don't believe in God. But you are using the material to praise your God. And you say your God is wise. You, are say, you say your God gives power. He gives wisdom. When will your God start giving you wisdom to produce your own materials to worship Him? You are supposed to produce the, 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 the things to use, uh, use in worshiping your God. When people that don't believe in God make things, you use it and you see, said, God is the one that gives wisdom. God is the one that gives person wisdom to do this. Why not that God give you that wisdom so you stop suffering and stop spending a lot of money to buy it? Think. You pray because somebody taught you to pray. Not because you wanted to pray. Not because you were born to pray. You know how, what they used to confuse us and also used to use it to confuse myself that time as a Christian is, you know, prayer. Uh, prayer is like oxygen. You need oxygen. You breathe, you need oxygen. No, prayer is not like any oxygen. Oxygen is, is a must. Prayer is not a must. You can live without prayer, but you cannot live without oxygen. You need oxygen. You must breathe it. It's not like prayer. Okay, you pray because you lack, but nobody lack oxygen in this world. When you are lacking oxygen, you know you are dying. So you know what they do? They bring another oxygen and put. But prayer, prayer cannot solve your problem. If you are dying, prayer will not stop you. So that brought me to what I discussed with some people at work yesterday. <laughs> so he said that um, he said he said um, it's my coworker from Nigeria also. So. He said that they called him yesterday that somebody was very sick. Okay, so they needed one hundred and something thousand to pay the hospital bill for treatment to commence. You know, he said the person is very sick. It's a really it's a family relation. Okay. Then he went to bank to send the money. While he was there, you know, the place they tell the they tell that the system is down. He says, see. God is so good to me. Then the the when he called his brother, his brother said the guy is dead. He said, "See, the guy who was trying to send money to pay for his treatment is already dead, right?" So, but he don't know why I was shaking my head when he was saying that. I said, "Look, you see what happened. This person has been going to church because he's a Roman Catholic member. This person has been praying." To God, maybe the person is a Pentecostal, you know, because religion divided us, Christianity divided us. Some, especially the Yoruba family, you can see some are Muslims in one family, and some are Christians there. Uh, when they are Christians, you see they are Pentecostal, Methodist, Catholic, uh, you know, different <laughs> denominations, but they claim they are worshiping one God and one Jesus, right? So. I said the church did not pray uh, for that person to recover because one of the promises of Jesus is the last one there in Mark chapter 16, 17 and 18. He said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. So he said, no, you know, sometimes sin, man. I said, is sin greater than your God? What, what type of God is that that my sin will stop him from healing me when I'm sick? And I'm, I believe in him. He's my father. I've been contributing to his work. I've been investing. As they ask me to bring my tithe, my offering, or whatever they ask me to do, even investing my time, going to the place, saying I'm worshiping him. I am, I am caring for his people. So why? He said, you know what? You no, know, some people die, you know, in the, even in America. I said, no, in America, here yeah, they can sustain your life. Unless you refuse treatment. 
or even when you refuse treatment, when they get doctor's order to give you injection, it's a must. If you say no, they hold you down and give you that injection. It's legal. So America is not like Nigeria. You say it's not true. Some people die in America. I say it's not true. Unless they, if they run tests on that person, unless the person was sick, the person pretended. He said, no, there was a woman, she, got, she had a baby and she died. I said, did they run the test in America? They run tests and said, this is the problem. They will do everything to save that life. It helps you to save more life than, as, did I say save more life? Helps you to save lives. God doesn't save any life. Jesus doesn't save any life. Prayer doesn't save any life. So these people keep saying about death. Maybe the person will still die. If God said the person will die, the person will die. I say no. No God is saying anybody will die. There are machines today they have. Even they can put you on life support. When God say you will die today, they can put you on life support to live even some years. Ma made it. It's only in your Bible you read that somebody wanted to die. God gave him extra 15, 15 years. King Hezekiah. But your God cannot give you extra one day today. But when you go to hospital, they treat you. You come alive. You say, thank God. God is the one that have. It's not any God. It is medicine. It is hospital. It is people. People that know what they are doing. Because knowledge is the greatest. Not love. People's love will never heal you. But knowledge can heal you. Knowledge can keep you alive. Love cannot keep you alive. You are religious leader, they love you, but when you are sick, they can pray and you get healed. You have to go to hospital. All that testimony they are giving you in the church is crap. It's when people survive somehow, they come and tell you nonsense. You know, God that could not prevent that sickness, you say he healed you. That is nonsense. All right? So you pray because somebody taught you so. So what you really need is to use your brain and think, acquire knowledge, skills, and work with your hands. That's what you need. If you know, so I, I also tell the person, do you know your body speaks to you, but you ignore it? If we can listen to our body, we won't be sick, you know, many times we have been sick. Your body said, don't eat that thing. He said, man, I'm hungry. I must eat. The same thing happened when we contact STD, like uh, say, uh, uh, um, uh, like AIDS or all those gonorrhea. You see a woman, your body speak to you, say, don't go. But because you already have erection, and you say this girl is beautiful, or this woman is beautiful, I must have sex today with her. She's nice, and she's listening to me. So you go and have sex. And maybe the lady will tell you, use condom. You say, no, don't worry, you're good. You, know? you, look, you look beautiful. Then after you get sick. So many times we suffer because we don't listen to ourselves. They taught us not to listen to ourselves. They tell us to listen to one invisible being in the sky. Listen to yourself first. Listen to those around you. It will save you a lot. Praying or listening to imaginary God or invisible God will never save you anything. Wake up, my people. What we need, we all, we need to use our brain. Think, acquire knowledge and skill and work with our hands. Many of us are running away from skill today. All we, are, all we want to acquire is money. Um, we, we do, you, you can't say your father will teach you any skill he has anymore. It's money. Go to oil company. Go to America. Go to Europe. Go to Malaysia. Go to this. They keep going abroad to make money. Nobody have skill anymore. Families don't have any skill in the family anymore. Before, among our people, when you come to a family, there is something they used to know about. And that thing sustains them. They help others. Other, others also help them. You see people bringing gifts to them. Oh, because you, you, you do this for me, you do this. They bring gifts. They live comfortably. But today, everybody is chasing the wind, the call money. And you cannot grab it. Because when you grab it, you will die and still leave it there. It's either you leave it or it leave you. We are unstoppable when we determine to walk. We are unstoppable as, as a people. When we unite and determine to walk, no one can stop us. And this is why I'm calling on my brethren, especially those that say they are Biafrans, the Igbos. How long will you be persecuted in your own house? You are suffering in your own house and you claim to be wise. The wisest tribe in Nigeria are the Hausa tribe. They know how to fortify themselves. They know how to use weapons. They are ready. 
but you think they are fools. They are not. They are wiser than you. They let one man control them. And when one, that man said, go left, they will never go right. They, all of them will go left. But you see the Igbo tribe especially, that claim to be wise. They are wise, but they have no weapon. Oh, because you are once defeated, now you're going to remain a what? A defeated somebody? No, rise up. Every nation you see that, that is powerful today, one time suffered loss. They suffered defeat. Wake up. Wake up. There are many of our brethren that are ready to do what it takes for us to establish our own nation. But fear. You claim to be wise. But fear of doing something. You, you, you know. And religion also make you that. But if we can unite together, at least secure our own land, though you are still in Nigeria, but among those states that belongs to you, you, you determine what happened. If you said this party will not exist there, they will not exist. Even whatever the federal government is doing. Because when federal government finish their own, they go. They leave your land. You are there. You're supposed to determine it. And when I talk about that, the only place you will see the real Igbo blood in Nigeria is like, I think from the middle of Imo State to Abia, um, Abia State to Imo State, or Imo State to Abia State. But, but you know those people like Aba people, Abangwa people. Uh, um, what do you call these people again? Where my ancestors came from? Uh, um, Aro, Aro Chuku them. Uh, uh, those people. It's, they, they they have that. They, they they don't want to remain slaves in their land. They are ready to. When you're talking about Biafra, Biafra, Anambra people. I'm from Anambra, right? But we are mixed people. People that come from everywhere, and I'm gonna say, but if you see when they hear money, yeah, okay, okay, and they don't want to lose anything, but they want to have freedom. How can you have freedom without you losing something? Of course, America is having freedom because oh, the freedom they said because many people died, also, they have men that died, they have the troops that died for them to have that freedom. But you, you don't want to work with your hand. You want to make money and live forever. You're going to live in, in, in chains forever, even in your own house, until you wake up. You don't have direction. Anyone that comes up, okay, t today, then tomorrow, you're talking about Nigerian politics. What confused people are that? You are not wise. You see what is happening in Lagos to my people. They say Yorubas are attacking them. You have been living in Yoruba land for many and you, are, you have great number in Lagos. You haven't purchased any weapon that will make these people, when they come to attack you, at, you, you, you revenge. Then they will stop it. But you, are, you make money more than them in Lagos. Why are you still allowing them to attack you? Why? You, don't, you, they go, oh, you have money to buy your neck out, to go December in your village to be shooting it. You don't have money to buy those things. Prepare yourself. Have all the weapons you need in your house. If the need arises, use them. When they know you are equipped, they will respect you. It's the same thing happening in America. You see, the white people that are buying guns, and the government know these people have guns. Before you kill them, at least they will kill some of you. But today, they will rise up and start cleaning evils like goats, and you'll be crying, where is your God? Where is that God you say is brother? And you have been praying to that God. Those they killed during and after this election that just passed in Nigeria are still going on, right? They, they, they were not atheists. They believe in God. And those people that killed them believe in God. And you, you see, no African should be upset when somebody said they are atheists. I'm not at, an atheist. But when somebody said they are not atheists, you that is an atheist, uh, you that, that is not an atheist, you shouldn't be upset. Where is your God while you are suffering? Where is that God? You got that God is nowhere to be found. But you will run your mouth against somebody that says, say, that God does not exist. You said, only fool say, there is no God. You are stupid. It shows that the fool is better than you. The, the fool is truthful than you. Say things as they are. If you have not seen God, there is no God. Stop defending it. Oh, it's like oxygen. Use oxygen. You say it's like air. Use air. Why not use that God? Why not use that God to make your life better? Why not use that God to defend yourself when they come to arrest you, when they come to kill you? In your Bible, people that have that God, they give you, and you believe it. He said when they came to arrest them, they make them blind. Can your God do that? They came to arrest them, they said, it will not work. Fire consume you. God did that. When we are God, do that. 
Hey, God of Elijah. God of Elijah is my God. Until Flanny said men come with their machete, with their guns. Then the God of Elijah will run away. The God of Elijah will run away. And you have been messing yourself up with the nonsense they wrote in the Bible. Wake up, my people. Wake up, wake up, wake up. All right? I see some of my relatives also, they come on Facebook and talking nonsense. Saying, I know we end like this. Nonsense. Go and worship your idol. They ask me. I say, see an idol worshiper, a Roman Catholic member, telling me to go and worship my, idol, worship my idols because I'm telling you to consider your own ancestors. You believe your ancestors were worshiping idols. What are you worshiping as a Roman Catholic member? What are you worshiping as a Pentecostal? What are you worshipping as a uh, as a Christian? You are an idol worshipper. Your ancestors weren't idol worshippers. They were honoring their heroes, their past, their ancestors. They make their status. They weren't make any. They weren't making any status for imaginary being they, they have not seen. Even in your Bible, when they put it there, they said in Acts chapter seventeen, when Paul went to Athens. He did not see them. They did not make any idol of maybe a being. Said this is God. How can you make? A, is, that's what Christianity did. They make a being that does not exist. Paint it. That's why it looked differently. You see all different pictures of one Jesus, but different faces, different lives. But Mary, all, all the images, pictures, statues they make, they never look the same. Check my pictures. Even right from. Let me say, before I came to America, I think since I started taking pictures, if you check all my pictures, you can say, this is Shadrach, this is this guy. You cannot take my brother's picture and say, that is me. No. Unless you are blind. But if you can see, my picture is the same, wherever I am. And you are the one worshipping idols. And you will come, attacking me and telling me nonsense. You are stupid for doing that. Wake up. I'm not asking you to come and join me. I'm not asking you to give to my ministry. I'm not asking you to give me any, any of your cobble or dime. I'm just asking you to think for yourself and you're coming against me. I said, fuck Jesus. You are coming against me. Are you Jesus? Why are you speaking for Jesus if Jesus exists? I said, fuck God. You're coming against me. Are you God? You, you have the right to attack me when I attack you. But if I have not attacked you, you are attacking me because I said something about God or Jesus who you are not. You are stupid doing that. Wake up, my people. I made that post also about prayer. And I will close with that. I said, I don't pray to any invisible God. Hmm. When you stop praying, you will see the relief you have. Because that means your eyes are open. You can just not wake up and say, no, I don't believe in praying anymore. You think I just wake up one day and begin to say what I said? If you know what I've been through, if, if you know what I've done as a Christian, I've invested my time, my life, my money in, no, in trying to know this God and Jesus. Hmm. I know more than some of your pastors. Unless maybe, because unless some, uh, when, when, uh, 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 yeah, I know more than them, I mean your pastors, because if they know at least a little bit what I know, or 50% of what I know, they will tell you the truth. I can tell you the truth because I know more than your pastors. Your pastor will not tell you that truth. Because their truth they will tell you is corrupt, is half truth. They cannot tell you the whole truth. But I will tell you the whole truth. I'm not trying to cover anything up. I'm not trying to win your approval. I'm not trying to win your membership. I don't care whether you accept what I'm saying or not. All I'm asking you is to think for yourself and live your life. When you begin to think yourself, the burden you have on yourself and others will be, thrown, will be drawn off. You begin to live a simple life. I don't pray to any invisible God. So let me read it. It's the text I made. I say, I don't pray to any invisible God. If prayer means to, to ask for what I need, then I daily ask from visible people around me. And within my reach, especially my my old work self, like I said earlier, I speak. To, I ask myself something. Let's go. Let's do this. I talk to myself. So if I must pray, if prayer means to ask for what you need, I ask for people around me, visible people. Why am I looking for invisible being to ask for help? Why I am visible and there are visible people around me, and the problem is visible problem. I ask. 
people around me. If you must pray to a God, then why not pray to gods, that's men, and goddesses, women? People that have the will and the power to help you. The people that have things to help you in your time of need. But you are praying to invisible God that cannot help you in your time of need. It does not help your father. It does not help your mother. It does not, it does not help your family members. And you believe it will help you. If he could not prevent that problem from coming, what makes you think he can solve it? He cannot. But they tell you believe. He can with God, all things are possible. Believe, God will supply all your need. With God, nothing is impossible. Nonsense. God cannot feed you. At least give you one square meal a day. He cannot. It's when people give you, say, God, it's angel. You haven't seen angel. You say, yeah, anybody that do good to you is an angel. That's crap. That's not what the Bible says. <laughs> Angels are different. And even your Bible says they have wings. And you believe nonsense. I used to believe that crap. He said, he said um, if you must pray to unknown God, then why not pray to your own ancestors? You don't know your ancestors, do you? No. So, but you are connected to your ancestors. Why not pray to them? Instead of you praying to unknown, I don't pray to any God. I don't pray to any ancestor. I don't need to pray to anyone. I pray to people around me I can see. That's who I pray to. I don't have to pray. Oh, God, for, that's crap. I've been doing that since my childhood. And it didn't change anything in my family. And when I succeed, I think, oh, it's my prayers. Oh, my, my mother is praying for me. My father is, oh, that's crap. If your prayer works, it's supposed to start with you. You see poor person saying, I'm praying for you to get it there. When you go and walk and make it, you say, you know, we have been praying for you. So bring some money to us. Buy something for us. You're coming from, from ab abroad. Buy this, buy that. We have been upholding you in prayer. Quit prayer. Let that prayer uphold you first. Let that prayer enrich you first. Not enriching others. Not upholding others. Why you are miserable. Why you are suffering. Think. It's supposed to start with you. Charity begins at home. So you have no, you have no, no proof. Or you, you have no, no proven connection. With invisible God. You don't have such connection. So why are you praying to that God? You don't have any known connection with Jesus. Why are you praying in his name? Person you don't know. For example, you can't ask me to pray Say pray for the God of my land. I say, what is, who is the God of my land? He say, his name is Ngegu. I should pray to Ngegu. I don't know Ngegu. Uh, nobody nobody is, is not my ancestors. You're talking about God of the land. No, I'm talking about my ancestors. I need to know my ancestors. At least I know that my fa um, my family name or uh, the name we used to be uh, is Ezangwe. So I want to know about Ezangwe. So if I will pray, I will pray to Ezangwe because that's the person they said I gave back to my forefathers. So, but I have to know him first. Then when I know him, I will know. Then if he ask, I should pray to him. Pray to him for what? For, for him to give me what? I don't need to pray to him to give me anything. I have the power. I have the will to live in this life now. I don't need any invisible God or any of my dead ancestors to give me any power. That's what you see people suffering today. You go to the tree, you go to somewhere, you say you're praying to one God, you're praying to your ancestors, you're pouring libation, all this nonsense. Stop! I tell you I'm against all religion, domestic and foreign. But you see Christians, they don't think, when they talk to me, they think, oh, I'm, I'm telling them to leave God and begin to worship idols or their ancestors. You don't worship nobody, you don't worship nothing. Why are you worshipping? Who give you the idea or the concept of worship? The same people that give you the idea and concept of creation. That one that give you the concept of worship. You have no known proven connection with God or Jesus or any other fictional character recorded in the Bible and Quran. You don't. I've seen black person. And he said that Abraham is his ancestor. Nonsense. Even though, even in the Bible, he said that Abraham know you not. And you still say, Abraham, he said, Abraham never existed. You're supposed to know your ancestors, not those my, mystical characters in the Bible, in the Quran. 
you're supposed to know that you have direct proven connection with your ancestors. You are alive. For without them, you won't be here today. If not for your ancestors, you won't be here today. God is not the one that put you here. Invisible God in any sky, in heaven or anywhere, in hellfire, is not the one that put you on earth. Your ancestors did. They had sex and brought you forth. You did not fall from the sky. You were not made by any God in heaven or in hell. You are an, like an apple. An apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Unless you are stupid enough to believe otherwise. You say, no, apple can fall in London. Why the tree is in Africa? Nonsense. They use religion to, def the, to divide you from your ancestors, from your families. They want you to hate your loved ones and yourself for an unknown idiot. You say exist somewhere in the name of God or Jesus or Allah or Buddha or whatever you call them. If you must pray to unseen being, then why not pray to your own ancestors and let them communicate with you if possible? Any being you are praying to that does not communicate with you does not exist. If that being exists, even if it's invisible, it's supposed to be speaking to you as face to face, man to man. But that God is not speaking to you. All you crazily believe is, I know there is God. I believe in God. Oh, yo, they, some tell me, what you're saying is true, but I still believe there is God. That's stupid. And they are educated people. They are more educated than me. But all I'm asking them to use their brain because your brain is greater than any level of education you, attend, you attended or will attend in this life. I don't pray to invisible God or to my unseen ancestors. Even if my ancestors exist, I won't be asking them to give me power and wealth. But for them to tell me what happened, does tell me about their greatness. Tell me about <laughs> what happened before this level. I want to know about their greatness and exploits. That's what I want to know. Not going to a book to know what somebody wrote. No, I want to hear from the one that exists. If you are God and Jesus truly really exists, you don't, you wouldn't need the Bible or Quran because they're supposed to be communicating with you. Why are you listening to what they say he said to Moses? What of you? What makes you different from Moses? You have the same God like Moses did. So you, that God is supposed to communicate with you also. But you don't care. So uh, what I want to know from my ancestors, I want to hear from them, if they exist, is about their greatness and exploit before the slavery and what they did during slavery before they were brutally killed. That's what I want to know. I don't want any power from any god or any ancestor. I have that power. I don't want them to motivate me. I can motivate myself. There are other people around me that can motivate me. Everything around me can motivate me. Why am I looking for invisible being where there are visible being all over the place? Even today, online, on television, everywhere. There are many means you can see people help you. You're still praying to an invisible God because a silly book says you should be doing that. Give to the Lord. Give to which Lord? May God forgive you. Forgive you for what? God, I cannot give you a, a, a one square meal. He's the one that will forgive you. So quit, quit sin. The same people that created that God created that sin and created the Savior John. And when they find out, you will, you will find out sooner or later that they lie to you. They say, you know, if you say you have no sin, you have lied. The truth is not in you. You are calling God a liar. God, of course, you know, God is a liar. If God is not a liar, they wouldn't have had that idea to say, you're saying God is a liar. He lied in Genesis chapter chapter, uh, chapter 2 and 3. He said, if they eat the fruit, they will die. They ate the fruit, they did not die. So he get annoyed and chased them out of the garden. Why you didn't die? <laughs> that God is a silly God, very stupid. And it's in the Bible I learned about the weakness and foolishness of God. It's in the Bible. Not that anybody, not, no, no, not any Satan. Is there first Corinthians chapter one? Paul says about the foolishness and weakness of God. So that God is weak and that God is foolish. And why are you worshiping a foolish and weak God? You are just as what you are worshiping. And check it, everybody that is worshiping that God is weak and foolish. So when they want to add, they act wickedly as that God, start killing people. It's weak people that kill people. 
Some people don't kill people because they are protected. They, they are not insecure. Weak people are the ones that kill people. And foolish people are the ones that kill people also and take people's properties. Because they are not wise to live as human beings. They are not wise enough to live as a people. So they begin to kill and take other people's property as they did to Africa. I want you to know this. That we have the power and the will to live today. But we lack, but the lack of knowledge of our true history, our ancestors, is keeping us far from our glorious root that the entire world envied one time and destroyed by military power. It was no any invisible God that destroyed Africans, African ancestors. It was foolish and weak people with weapons that destroy. Africans, African ancestors. Until today, is with the same weapon they are controlling Africa. Africa is not free yet. Africans are not free yet. The day Africa will be free and Africans free, you will see many Africans return back to Africa and begin to possess their possession again, begin to reclaim their land. They will drive away the Israelites. They will drive away the Philistines. They will drive away the, the Gentiles and occupy their place. Because we are Africans, and we have the will and the power to rise up again and do the needful. And calling us to wake up, we have to unite first. We are not rushing it. Just keep waking them up. Keep waking them off. When we have that majority, when the many of us are awake, the few that are still sleeping can sleep well. Let us go and get that freedom. Let us recover our heritage and learn when they wake up, they will respect us and respect their ancestors. That we must do. There is hope for our rising to power and freedom again. And I welcome you to that work notion. Let us know there is hope for us. We are not hopeless people. Let us unite Africans. Let us stop letting religion and politics divide us. Trash religion, trash politics. Let us live as our ancestors once lived without going to destroy people and destroy their properties. And let us learn from the mistake of our, from, of our ancestors. Stop trusting wrong people. Stop trusting your oppressors. No matter how they dress, no matter how they disguise themselves, they say they are coming as a guest. Have a place to, 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 to take care of them. Don't let them in. Because when you let them in, they start to know your secrets. And then they will go and prepare and come and destroy you. Let us wake up and stop praying to imaginary beings. And stop believing our oppressors. Rather, let us ask each other. You know, as family. And help each other. And build together. And see that. Life is good. It's people that make it bad. Life is simple and easy. It's people that make it hard. Life is sweet. It's people that make it bitter. How are you making your own life? Start with you. Start with you. Remember the freedom, the sources, whatever we're talking about for our good, it starts with you. Thank you for listening and thank you for sharing. I love you all. Peace.